All right, so let's go over free response question three from the 2013 practice, practice exam. Here we have a twice differentiable function W that models the volume of water in a reservoir at a time T where W of T is measured in gigaliters and T is measured in days. The table above gives values of W prime of T sampled at various times during the time interval. So we're going from zero to 30 days and at time, at time T equals 30, the reservoir contains 125 gigaliters of water. Use a tangent line approximation to W at time T equals 30 to predict the volume of water W of T in gigaliters in the reservoir at time T equals 32. Show the computations that led to your answer. Okay, so um, this one's kind of like, this, there's not much to this. Just make sure you understand the basic principle because um, it's asking you to predict how much water, um, the, the, so that it's gonna ask you to help, it's, gonna, it's asking you to predict the volume of water at or on a 30 second day essentially um based on what you know from here so we were we only go up to day 30 in here now um these are telling you the rates um like how much water essentially is coming in so if on day 30.5 gigaliters are coming in per day we just have to use this because that's the last piece of information we have so for the next two days, we just keep this the same. So we would have 0.5 liters on day 31 and 0.5 liters on day 32. And we just add that to what we had on day 30. So on day 30, we had 125. And for the next two days, we'll just keep that same rate of 0.5. And then we just have 126. 126 gigaliters will be our gigaliters. That's all there is to it. Um, B, use a left Riemann sum with the three subintervals indicated by the data in the table to approximate the integral from 0 to 30 of W prime of T dt. Use, use this approximation to help estimate the volume of water in gigaliters in the reservoir at time t equals 30. Show the computations that lets your answer. Um, okay, so remember that the left Riemann sum, the, you know, uh, maybe the trapezoidal rule, you're just finding area using rectangles. It's really that simple. Um, don't like try to memorize a formula because sometimes students will make like a silly mistake because they just try to memorize the formula. So let's just look at what we have here. We want to, we can only really make three rectangles because all we have are three widths. We have one width here of 10, we have a second one here of 12, and a third one here of eight. So each of these are the bases of the rectangles, so to speak. The heights will just be these values, but remember we can only use three of them and it'll tell us which three to, to use because it tells you either right hand or left hand. It tells you to use the left, so we just use the left ones. The 0.6, the 0.7, the 0.1. And so then we can set up this integral, w prime of t dt will be approximately equal to 10 times 0.6 plus 12 times 0.7 plus eight times one. That should give us six, oh, 22, right? Point four. Okay, and then um, And let's say what it, okay, so what is it saying? Use approximation. The time t equals, oh, okay, so sorry, I overthought that. Okay, so, um, so, so this is how much water was approximately added, or this is, uh, this is what we approximated to be the amount of water added over these 30 days. 
So since it says on day 30, there's 125, that means we can figure out how many were at the start or on day zero by subtracting 22.4 from 125. And then we'll get 100, well, no, 102.6. That's what's our, that's what our estimate's gonna be based on that. I think it's large GL, like Eagle Leaders. <clears throat> need some water. So I need some water. All right, now part C. Explain why there must be at least one time t other than t equals 10, such that w prime of t equals 0.7 liters, 0.7 gigaliters per day. Well, I'll tell you why. Because I said, no, because math said so with this rule or, you know, this theorem known as the intermediate, intermediate volume theorem. So we're, since this is continuous, because, you know, it's, you know, it's water being added, it's not going to have like, it's, it's, it's in its flow. It's, it's going to be in a continuous function. Um, we won't put any like any gaps or jumps. And we know that like um, there was a time when it was 0.6, and this was when the we know there were, we were given four explicit rates: 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 1, and 0.5. We have a 0.7 here. Now, other than this, we know that it has to have also been 0.7 somewhere between the, these two times. Because to get from one to 0.5, you have to go through 0.7 somehow. You can't, with, again, it's continuous. Like it, it, could, it could even go up to 10.0, it could go up to 12.0, to but it has to come back down below one, it has to cross 0.7. So somewhere in here, 0.7 has to ha be, uh, be one of the W primes of, you know, of T. So we don't know, it, could, it only may, it could be for like a fraction of a second, but it has to occur some, to some extent. So, let me just show you my written answer. Here's what I put out when I wrote it out formally. Since W prime of T is differentiable and continuous on this closed interval, 22 to 30. And since W prime of 30 is 0 0.5, which is less than 0.7, which is less than 0 0.1. This is just kind of how what I was saying to you guys in words. By the intermediate value theorem or IVT, there has to be a value on the interval 22 to 30 such that W prime of T is 0.7. Make sure you know this because there's usually always one, at least one question graded on here based on that. Let's look over the intermediate value there for sure. That's a two point question. All right, the last one. The equation A equals 0.3 W to the two thirds gives the relationship between the area A in square kilometers of the surface of the reservoir and the volume of water, W of T in gigaliters in the reservoir. Find the instantaneous rate of change of A in the square kilometers per day with respect to T when T equals 30 days. These always seem a lot longer when I read them out loud. Now, um, this is really kind of what maybe you started going over in chapter two with the related rates using the chain rule. So. Remember that that when you have like a function of a function or a composite function, you have to use the chain rule because um because the the variables depend on more than one variable. It's not just x and y. Here we have area, um, we have a, we have volume, and we have time. You got those three things, those three variables. So we have to relate them somehow. So dA dt is equal to dA dw times dW dt. The chain rule is here. And that's really it. Like that's the part students overlook or make that mistake. Um, so then we just have it here. Using the power rule, two thirds, you know, two thirds times the point. I don't know if I should, maybe I can do it again kind of here. That looks cooler. Two thirds times the point three times the W, two thirds minus one, negative one third. But now we multiply by the inside of that. See the W, DW, DT or W prime of T, and then we just work it down. We're given some information at time T equals 30. 
we're told, you know, again, the value or we're not, or we, we found these values and we can you know, solve for them. And it just becomes, you know, a fun math problem. So from here, again, you know, I'll flip back in the front in a second, just to remind you, but they were talking about, you know, what, what the value of W prime is at 30. And, you know, that's given in our table. Right over here, I got the 0.5 right there. And remember where the W of 30 is, you know, how much water there was at, in, at on day 30, and we're told 125. That's where we get that. So it's just all that that we re found and saw for in context. And we just simplified. And we end up getting 0 0.02. And there we go. And this is the three point problem.